All right. We're going to go right into it. Welcome back, folks. It is day 166 with Duolingo Japanese. Once again, Maku desu. Minasan, konnichiwa. Yokoso. So, yeah, we're still in this uh, Unit 36. Unit 36 is pretty, pretty chill. It seems like they're taking a change of pace for kanji forward stuff. Let's see, remember stuff. I remember that we picked up three different things that I, for, I, I glanced over the previous day. So let's review them. Unit 36. It says discuss a meal. Not quite it. All right. So kanji stuff. Um. Yeah, Ocha, Ocha. <laughs> Omizu. Put O in front of this stuff. Sakana. Uh. Old. How did that work? Okay. Sloppy. Let's try again. <clears throat> yeah. Yasai. Yasai. to oh right random stuff oops so 
Ego. Ego. Uh, something I forgot yesterday was... A breakup now. Oh... Oh my, oh my, uh, oh not my wa, oh not my wa, <clears throat> oh not my wa. Nan desu ka? Oh my, uh, oh not my wa. Oh, now my wa non desu Hmm. Um, all right. Now let's do some grammar points. We had. Choto. Choto. Chodo and nope, that's not the right one. Oh wait, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Dewa or Kewa? I think it's Dewa. Yeah. Dewa. Oh no. <laughs> For sure it's Dewa. Ewa and hmm, Dore. No. Yeah, Dore. Dore and Dewa. <clears throat> Other meal stuff. Let's do right. Aberu. No more. Okay. Arigato. Chiso, Cochiso, 
サマーサマーでしたごちそうサマーでしたにじさんじよじよじごうじろくじしちじ8時9時10時11時12時13時14時15時16時17時18時19時20時時1分時2分時2分三分。あ。四、四分。五分。六分。七分。八分。九分。え、十分。え。え、through an ema。Ugh, that's a disgusting looking Ima. Ima? Actually. Pretty sure. My Nichi, my Nichi. Mm, foods. Yes, I l l c h a t Mizu, Akana. Niku All right. Ah,、uh, why? Throw in another food item. Tamago. Tamago.、Um, is there any other food items that we have with kanji? ご飯どう
and throw in mm -hmm. Asako Hunt. Hmm. On Gohan, which would make sense for the evening, and then oops. Ugh. Save me. space we gotta make this chonker longer and hiru gohan i think that's pretty good good enough for unit 35 i mean 30 36 35 was a convenience store Convenience store stuff. No kanji, but no categorized kanji. But we do have Okane. Okane and Oops. Holy, what happened? I tamas. I tamas. Okay. Convenience store, convenience store. Oh, hashi. Bento Apuram Kopiki, a uh, Kopiki, Kopiki. Oops. Scan. <clears throat> Gamu
えー、ヤキル。ヤキルヤキルするコピーするあ、たためる。あ<咳>、たためる。こちらです。What am I doing on Duo? I'm、uh, recalling my vocabulary from the last two units before I start my Duo lesson for the day. Ochiratis. It's not the right one. Right. Show, show, or match, could I say? There were two other phrases here somewhere. No more predicates. Ikitas, Ikitas. Otsuri, <clears throat> Otsuri. Neji Bukro Bukro
Hmm. How many is that? One, two. Two. Seven. Eleven. Fifteen. Eighteen. That's kind of low. <clears throat> I think we can get three or four more. I'm forgetting. Those are some repeats too. <clears throat> I think that's good enough. Alright. We're good. Mm, yeah. Good, good, good. Alright, let's go into our personalized practice. Philippine-jin. Philippine-jin desu. Philippine-jin. Philippine-jin. フィリピン人です。タバコは全然吸いません。タバコは全然吸いません。全然吸いません。全然。フィリピン人です。フィリピン人です。タバコはあまり吸いません。タバコはあまり吸いません。先週渋谷で面白い店を見つけました。うん。うん。先週、先週渋谷で面白い店を見つけました。先週。来週一緒にカナダでパレードを見ませんか。来週一緒に、一緒にカナダでパレードを見ませんか。Uh, that's more of an English thing, but that's fine. They just want it. They wanted it in a very specific order. So they wanted the only thing that messed up was the together. They want the would you like to go together here? But that I disagree. 
Yeah, that, that happens every once in a while. It's a 50 50 flip. I, I disagree with the grammar there. It's, it's both gr grammatically correct. Uh, Hawaii Cafe. Uh, Rajuku. Rajuku. de. Sengetsu. Sengetsu. Tabako mo suimasen. Tabako mo. Tabako mo suimasen.毎年毎年祖父母母にクリスマスプレゼントをあげますあげますオッケークリスマスプレゼント ソフトボールに毎年いつも誰にプレゼントをあげますかうんいつもいつも誰にプレゼントをあげますか Such bad phrasing. Senshu Skosh Chugoku Ren Shushimashta Senshu Senshu Skoshi Oshi Chugoku or Ren Shushimashta Uh Okay. They just decided to avoid some prepositions. Alright, sure. Renshu. Renshu Shkoshi Chugoku go or Renshu Shimashita. I guess. That that works too. Yeah. Mainichi shigoto no ato, kin tore o shimas. Mainichi shigoto no ato, kin te, kin tore o shimas. Kin tore o shimas. Ah, mainichi shigoto no ato. Oto, oto no ato. Kin tore o. イチニチに1回筋トレをします。1日に1回筋トレをします。1日に1回筋トレをします。先週何時間スペイン語を練習しましたか? 先週先週何時間スペイン語を練習しましたか? ]先週。来週韓国で友達と会います。来週韓国語と韓国語 Oh, de, uh, tomodachi to I totally misread that. 
。来週、来週、韓国、あ、韓国語、あ、韓国で、韓国で、友達、友達と、友達と、友達と会います。あ、うん、<咳>会います。友達と韓国,韓国で韓国で韓国で来週来週一緒にカナダでパレードを見ませんか Yes, yes, I don't agree with you, but that's fine. It's either or. Oh, wait, maybe I made another error. いませんか Oh, maybe I did make another error actually. No, no, it's a different error. At least I might have wrote C. I might have wrote go instead of C. Now I'm kind of curious. I, I might have made a mistake on. I, I wrote go. I think that's the error. Now that I think about it, I, I think that was a legitimate error. I'm pretty sure I might have said go instead of C. e e They might still accept it. Let's see. I don't know. I'd like to see a parade. Yeah. On, on retrospect, I'm pretty sure I wrote go. I picked up go instead of C. So it's incorrect. I'm pretty sure this is still fine. Actually, I, I, I moved my. I should have moved my together back there. Just to see. No, no, I got the verb incorrectly. I got the predicate incorrectly. The moment I saw C next to go, I'm like, yeah, never mind. That's just an interpretive thing. <clears throat> It's still an English thing, though. Uh, let's see. 三年,三年生。三年生。三年生。二年生。一年生。何年生。四年,年生。Oh, hey! I think they fixed it. I think they adjusted that. 四年生。Because it keeps saying yonensei before. Or very strongly implying a mm, yonensei. Maybe it's just this particular voice. We'll see. Oh no, they're not going to go in with it. Oh, they're not going to go in with it. フライドポテトを食べます。食べます。フライドポテト。フライドフライドフレンチ。あ、サンガ、サンガイ、一ヶ月に。一ヶ月に三回ハンバーガーを食べます。一ヶ月に三回ハンバーガーを食べます。福岡のクルーズツアーに行きました。福岡のクルーズツアーに行きました。Uh, uh, 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 uh,
福岡福,あ福岡のクルーズとはあとはとはに行きました。OK、sure.。去年、姉と千葉の海に行きました。去年、うん、去年姉、姉と千葉のあ海に行きました。行きました。行きました。行きました。千葉の海に、千葉の海に。姉と、姉と。去年,去年日本の SF 映画を見ましたあ去年去年日本の SF, SF 映画を見ました見ましたです日本の SF 映画去年浅草で歌舞伎を見ましょう浅草で歌舞伎を見ましょう浅草で一ヶ月に二回一ヶ月に一回二回じゃ一回二回二回来月も歌舞伎を見ます来月も来月も歌舞伎を見ます来月も歌舞伎を見ます来月<笑> Yep, that's what I'm talking about. That's this stuff is、uh, no, it doesn't, it, it really doesn't matter. Like, I disagree with this, but that's fine. You can take your hearts.、Uh, if I didn't make the go or the C swap, I think together would also get marked incorrectly. Kaitai, 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 Taksan, Skymas, wait. Kaitai, so Kaitai, that's Kaitai. Kaitai, Taksan, Skymas. Yeah, that one, that one is very, very incredibly disagreeable. So, this is. 静かなレストランに行きましょう。そうですね。静か,あ静かなレストランに行きましょう。<笑>そうですね。家族とクルーズ旅行に行きました。家族と,家族とクルーズ料理に行きました。家族とそうですね近いのでこのレストランに行きましょうそうですね近いの近いのでこのレストランに行きましょうそうですね近いのでうんレストランに行きましょう。この,このレストランに行きましょう
あとので4時間ぐらい携帯でゲームをします4時間ぐらい4時間ぐらい携帯でゲームをしますありました。カラオケバー船で、あ、船に、船に。<笑>船にジムもありました。船にジムもありました。Uh, 船にジムも、ジムも。えと、ビールも全然飲みません。えと、ビールも全然飲みませんえっとぜんぜんあビールもいや、see now now you have this problem where where do you put the either? Let's just put it at the end. And then there are situations where you don't put it at the end, and I disagree. It means the same thing. I mean, like, it, it generally generalizes to the same thing. However, there is a nuance to it, but you can't actually tell from the Japanese. Is it convenient near the station? Oh. ああ、昨日近く。毎日晴れでした。毎日晴れでした。うん。え。先行は何ですか?先行は何ですか? <笑> ビールもあまり飲みません。ビールもあまり飲みません。お酒も飲みません。<笑> 
お酒も飲みませんはビジネスと中国語です戦国はビジネスと中国語です。中国語です。うん、OK。Oh no。See。Oh no no, that's right. ビジネスと。I missed it all. Oh. ビジネスと。中国語です。OK。That's fine。That's fine。I'm OK with that。ケンさんは2年生ですかケンさんは2年生ですか ?OK。This is, this is vocalization,、uh, vocative, it's vocative. ハナさんも今2年生ですかハナさんもハナさんも今2年生ですかワクチフあー今あっおーあー I guess that's fine. I swear, Duolingo. I swear. Okay. Dare ni CD o morai mashtaka. Dare, dare ni CD, CD o morai mashtaka. Dare ni CD o morai mashta ka? Honestly, I'd probably do a turn of phrase here and just interpret as who gave you that CD? Not who did you get the CD from? Yeah, that's probably what they want. Yeah. Or from whom did you get the CD? Kyone, Patona, and Yahana, or Morai Masta. Kyone, Patona, Patona, Ni Hana, Hana, or Morai Masta. Hokkaido wa mai ni chikumori deshita. Hokkaido wa mai ni chi. Mai ni chi. Hokkaido wa mai ni chi. Mori o. Mori deshita. Kumori deshita. Hey, Kumori. That's kind of weird. Look at Kumori with Deshita. Kind of reminds me of a predicate. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, discuss meals. Hana san, arigato. Hana san, arigato. Hana, arigato. Sams. Hana san, arigato. Arigato. Oh, I forgot Boku. I totally forgot to write Boku in the review, in the recall today. That's fine. Kore. Kore wa. Boku no. Coffee. Yes. Boku. 
花さんは英語ができます。花花花さん花さん,花さんは,は英語英語,英語ができます。できます。花さんは英語ができます。花さんは英語ができます。You want w a t a s h i w a t a s h i w a t a s h i w a w a t a s h i w a o c h a o c h a o o n o m a s s d o r e g a m i z d e s k a d o r e d o r e d o r e g a m i z u m i z u d e s k a k a d o r e g a m i z d e s k a o k i r i n g o k u d a s a i おおきいりんごおおきいりんごくださいごはんは食べませんごはんは食べませんごはんはは、うん、は食べ食べませんジュースは飲みませんジュースは飲みません Weird You're weird お水をくださいお水をくださいお,お水,水をくださいくださいご飯を食べますご飯を食べますあちょうどあ、this is 渋谷渋谷あ、oh no can you put ちょうど no ではでは、では、<咳>あ、では、シブヤ、では、シブヤ、行きましょうか。あ、シブヤに行きましょうか。あ、ウェシブヤ、シブヤに行きましょうか。What happened with おなまえをおめおなまえおねおなおねまえはなんですかおなまえはなんですかおなおなまえはおなまえはなんですかはなさんはなさんは英語ができます。はっさんは英語がますでき。うん。どれを飲みますかどれを飲みますかわったわったわいどれをな飲みますかわはいめん。Okay, that's fine. Do they do they all know me, Maska? Or ah, see, you, you can actually get away with which one you drink, but maybe. I don't know about that one. Watashi. 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 
たくさんたくさん食べます食べます、okay. 私はたくさん食べます、right. Okay Now、oh, this, this unit has been very weird Very very weird Then we get to time. Juji, Jupu, this. Zero, itchy, me. Zero, itchy, me. Okay. Nen. Hanashi. Ipun. Mokuyobi. Han. Kuji, Ju, Kufun, this. Kuji, Ju, Kufun, this. 9分です。電車、山田、山田お金、9月、1分、9時です。9時です。Okay. 今は5時15分です。今は10。15分, 15分です。今は5時15分です。今は5時15分です。今,今8時8時18分です。8時18分です。は18分です。7時半です。七時半です。牛乳。牛乳,牛乳を飲みます。飲みます。私は。私は。八時八分です。八時八分です。あちち、あちち、あっぷんだ。ああ、じゃあ、じゃあ、ごち、ごちそう、あごちそうさまでした。ごちそうさま。でした。五時四十五分です。五時四十五分です。五時。五時四十四十五分です。今は七時ちょうどです。今は七時ちょうどです。あ、七時。七時うん、ちょうど。You better not do it. Okay. Nick to Yasai o Tabemas. A Nick to Yasai Yasai o Tabemas. Nick to Yasai. Okay. All right. Review. Ego. Ego. 英語。ご飯は食べません。ません。ねん。はん。はなし。一分。木曜日。お。お名前は。お名前は何ですか。一<笑>分山田,山田電車九月,月お金お水をください牛乳は飲みません牛乳牛乳牛乳は,は飲みません飲みます
このこのリンゴはいくらですかリンゴはこのこのこのリンゴはいくらいくらですかではごちそうさまでした。OK。ではではごちそうさまでした。でしたでは、ごちそうさまでした。ごちそうさまでした。今あ、今は八時十、八時十八分です。八、うん、は、じ、十八分です。肉と野菜を食べます。肉、肉と,と野菜、野菜を,を、野菜を食べます。ます肉と野菜を食べます。野菜を、肉と魚は食べません。肉と魚は食べません。肉と魚。Oh, interesting. That's a good point. I do not eat meat or fish, as opposed to an. Hmm, that's a good point. Hmm. d o r e Uh. Oh, no. Sore. Sore. Sore wa dore desu ka? Des. o おかおですそれはこれあどれそれはどれですか ?I don't know about this one.This one is like, ん九時半ちょうどです。九時半ちょうどです。九時半ちょうどです。十二時ごろに食べます。Build at the park, very nice. Introducing the Duolingo. Do you ever、uh, bring like a sketch pad and go to the park and sketch something at the park? I always imagine myself doing that if I had a park nearby, but I had to drive to a park. <laughs> I live in the suburbs, I have to like drive everywhere. Been trying to get your body moving. Oh, okay. Three and a half kilometers. Oh, that's nice. Walking's nice too. Okay, we're running. You just usually watch TikTok and chill? All right. All right. All right, all right. Okay, so we want to complete our kanji section today. There was an update to Duolingo, but I don't know what the update is.、I、haven't. Seen the update. So, the only way I know that there has been an update to Duolingo on desktop is、um, when you go to practice, and if these numbers、uh, become gigantic again,、uh, something got refreshed.、And、every time they update,、uh, the, like, the notification of something new gets refreshed, at least. My opinion. So, something in the back end changed. I don't know what though. All right. So, let's complete these and then we're going to switch to Chinese. Okay. Yasai. 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 I got Bob today. You want to you wanna discuss a Duolingo trait? Here's a Duolingo trait.、Um, uh, what is it? Say, I went. No. How do I? 
it's something like I went to let's say I went to somewhere I went it doesn't really matter what the sentence is I went somewhere right wait I it's even more than that I also oh no 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 it's actually it deals with the also I went somewhere last month for example last month two right so if you place two here I went somewhere to last month that's incorrect <laughs> And I'm still not, I'm still not quite sure if, and this is translation. So, um, you got, you were given the Japanese prompt and it is actually not that clear. So the way I wrote, I wrote to here. So I went somewhere to last month, right? But uh, two in this way has to be at the end of a sentence. However, they might accept last month I went somewhere to. And I'm using placeholders, obviously. This seems like a very unnatural English phrase because it is. I'm just using somewhere as a placeholder. Yeah, so two, this type of two, I don't use this type of two very often. I, I really don't use this type of two very often. And it's adverbial, it's it's generally at the end. But when you're translating, you might be placing it in yes, different I... places. English names how made the language so because it's hard to know what's wrong and right, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Well I it's not even English um I, I know you you English natives make things confusing, but t there are too many in there are uh, uh, lots of significant English speakers now, so each of them have different preferences, if you know what I mean. So, uh, English groups have become so married that everything goes off. Because, like, if I were reading it in Japanese, I would put the two not at the end, I would put the two in the middle. So, um, English natives would likely put it at the end. In, in fact, I actually think uh, in this very specific case, English natives are more used to using two. I don't. I don't like using two. I would use also. So instead, I would say I also. I also went somewhere. But that wasn't a choice, right? That that's not a that's not a choice. And if you put I too went somewhere. And you put commas there, like here, you you could make a funny like in creative liberty right thing, but I would use also. I also went somewhere, and uh, du duo does translate to also or to. The thing is, you can't express I also went somewhere when two is your only choice. So then. Um, that shows, you know, that tells me that I obviously don't use two very often because I, oftentimes I don't know where to place it. And you might be thinking, well, that's kind of, that's kind of obvious if someone like a native or someone said, well, it's obvious. It's always grammatically correct at the end. That's not true because you have to translate, uh, expressions too. So you could say something like fish two please right this is the translation input for sakana sakana mo kudasai if you place the two at the end it'll be wrong because fish please two doesn't make that that doesn't translate but if you think about it this way, it still says fish, please. Also, yeah. So, 
You could say this is a more of a Japanese thing or a Chinese thing, really. Because I, I would still put two in the middle of a sentence because of the way Chinese and Japanese go about it. Putting two at the end is weird. <laughs> oh, and I said when I'm speaking, I also do either. Either and neither different too. Either and neither. They, they're supposed to go, a lot of times they go at the end of a sentence. But I don't think I use them properly as well. In, in English, I'm saying like my speaking patterns are not the grammatically correct. And this reminds me that my speaking patterns are not cor grammatically correct. That's what I mean by uh, learning English again. Um, it would be a really interesting to see what it's like to use Japanese to learn English. Because I think the stuff that we're discussing now has a lot to do with how we're engaging with our target language. I don't know if you ever got nailed by this, uh, Kate, but um, this is also true when you say uh, like konnichiwa, like uh, kensan, kensan, right? Kensan, konnichiwa. Right, konnichiwa. So kensa and konnichiwa would be fine, but if you submit this, they're gonna say it's hello Ken. And there was a time. There's some prompts you're going to get it wrong if you don't <laughs> reverse the order. <laughs> if you don't reverse the order, so in in Japanese. If Japanese is Kensan, Kensan Konnichiwa, right? Or you, you address the person first and then you say the thing. And then English is the reverse. It, it's a weird thing, but I, I kind of agree with them. Not that it's wrong or anything, like wrong or right. If you say it either way, you, you're still going to conversationally communicate the same, uh, very similar meaning. But there is a cultural thing here. Not that it's a grammatical thing, per se, but this happens too. And oh, I don't know if you noticed this in, in since you're using the Chinese course. Uh, names. Names are not reversed. Names are not reversed. But in the Japanese course, they will be wrong. They'll be marked as wrong if you get their names reversed. And... I think it might also have something to do with honorifics. So honorifics are always attached to a specific name, like a specific part of the name. So if you, so they want you to be aware of that. Meanwhile, in Chinese, you don't have that. So if you say, "wo wo jiao wo jiao jiang ming," right? Then you say my name. You can say my name is Jung Ming. Right? This would be wrong in Japanese if it was, I don't know. Uh, Anaka, Anaka Kensan. Uh, Tanaka Kensan, right? And then you wrote Tanaka. <laughs> you submitted Tanaka Ken. Uh, that would be marked wrong because it's Ken and Tanaka <laughs> in English. <laughs> uh, yes, and and it's it, it's actually the same in Chinese, but you don't. You don't have to switch. You don't have to swap it. You don't have to swap it in Chinese. You you keep the same order. If you swap it, actually, if you want to try, you can swap it and see if they mark it wrong. I'm I'm actually very curious. I I haven't tried. I haven't tried like every time, uh, Zhang Ming right, Zhang Ming, uh, comes up. If I uh submit it, Ming Ming Zhang. 
Ming Jiang would they mark it wrong? Because this is a negative result, right? I only, I just remembered that you have to flip the name one of the times. So I'm like, oh, you don't have to. But I didn't. In Japanese, you do have to flip the name. Not, not that it comes up too often. It, it actually doesn't come up that often. Just, it was just an observation. Yasai. They usually just stick with one name, so that's Yasai. fine. Yasai. Yasai. Oh boy, that shock is too close. Yasai. That's triggering both of them. Yasai. 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 It's all part of the growing pains of uh, language. Learning a language. Yasai. <laughs> or having multiple languages you're so used to. Yasai. I, I do it in Chinese too. I do it in Fujinese as well. When uh, I hear myself doing it sometimes, where I uh, move some of the adverbs and move some of the adjectives around because of English. My, my parents still understand me. Oh, well, most of the people I talk to still understand me. It's just the order would be in unnatural order. Or like a a different order because of English. It doesn't... It's not a way to discourage anyone from doing it anyways. So the reverse is still true. I'm, I'm positive that occasionally I would put like... Um a counter before like uh like which one goes first like hui um hui die somewhere instead of jai hui right jai hui because in english sometimes you can flip verb phrases in the reverse order like adverbial stuff can can end up being at the end or the begin like after the verb or in front of the verb and occasionally I can flip them around. Like, uh, 在住, uh, 在住, instead of 住在, um, kind of, kind of thing. I definitely hear those. But it's not disruptive enough for, um, people I talk to to not understand what I'm saying. And they just get flipped every once in a while. And in English, the also probably, perhaps, Lots of the adverbial things get flipped every once in a while too. So you get so used to like, if you get read back, if you get read back Japanese, then you start doing it in the Japanese order. And sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work with English because English is like, you can't decide <laughs> every once in a while. So interesting. Ego. Ego. With all that said, Duo can't take my hearts from me. Oh. <laughs> I typed Ego. Yes, plus Japanese is SOV order, right? Yeah. Yeah, Japanese is SOV. They want to be different. Ego. SOV. Ego. Ego. Ego I I still think uh people may over exaggerate how much structure can disrupt someone who already understands the language very much. If you know what I mean. So, like, the, it's a little bit dramatic, but I think a lot of the situation comes from the idea that if you only do one thing, which is like use one language, you get you you get used to anticipating things, and when that anticipation goes awry, everything else falls apart very easily. Right? A well-oiled machine can hit a brick wall when one thing falls falls off meanwhile a scrappy person who's like just 
barely getting by juggling things they might be more used to being on their feet right so when i hear english in sov it's not a big deal to me you can still understand the language however if you took it from a perspective of someone who's not used to knowing or being used to other different ways of ordering ideas then yeah the first time the first couple of times or only the few times they encounter it is going to be wildly confusing right because they're not used to it they're not used to the idea that you could english could be sov but not really yeah and i i don't think it would take too long even you know like at, like if you were to be interested you know if you were <laughs> the yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh korean i think i think so i don't actually know i don't know enough about korean we could ask blair later um yeah you just um after a while i think it for me it took about a month and then it became really regular so um later on when people start speaking english like they did these skits where you would change the english to sov right so what if japanese was spoken you know what if english was spoken like japanese and you still can understand it the the thing is though it's to me it's safe to say that when you're when you spend time in it then it becomes more so i'm not saying that um if you l learn english really well that immediately it'll become comfortable but at some point it does become pretty comfortable when you get used to it i think um the reason the point i'm trying to make is people really underestimate how good they are at adjusting to things when they really want to right don't sell yourself short that when you see like sov all of a sudden you're like well i'm never gonna get used to that right you said that when you learn to walk you said that when you learn to ride a bicycle or something you said that when you learn to drive a car like it it's it's um don't sell yourself short as a human being it's more like are you discomforted enough not to learn anymore right that's kind of the thing uh what is this oh ego it's very disheartening when i hear people constantly selling themselves short that like you did a lot of things that you didn't want to get used to and you still can do it so you're good to go i think there are way more complicated things than swapping up sov i mean not that that's not complicated but you've done it lots of times in your life doesn't even a 13 year old has done a lot of things in their lives that they had to get used to it's something that needs to be learned just like anything else yeah really mm -hmm. it's our emotions that are the are the ones you must negotiate you knew you knew <clears throat> And of course, physical limitations. There, there are such things as physical limitations, but we're not really talking about those at the moment. Like, I'm okay in accepting that uh, you you can't fly. Like, uh, all right, I I'm fine with that. Like, not fly and you know just by flapping your arms. I'm I'm okay with that. That that's fine. <laughs> Maybe this won't be uh true in the future, but for now, I think I think we're okay with uh not being able to fly unaided. Not being able to fly unaided. Boku. 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 
僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕僕Suburbia. Yasai. I made a comment about needing to go, need to, need to drive like 15 to 20 minutes to get to a park. <laughs> you can't walk to a park. Although, with that said, walking outside and just walking around is, is fine too. You're in a neighborhood, so you just walk around or all you see is houses. As the, uh, as far as the eye can see. And then if you finally get out of the, Suburbs, then all you see is farmland. So that's kind of where I live. Yasai. I spent half my life in the city, though. Yasai. Oh, it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of experience. Yasai. 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 I'm from the city too. Let's go sprawling, copy paste houses and bad infrastructure. <laughs> Today I learned apparently Mako seems to be membrane in Japanese. Oh, like the word membrane? Oh, interesting. Yasai! I had no idea that's what it meant. <laughs> membrane, huh? Yasai! 野菜。野菜。I actually don't know what the full name means as well. 野菜。Oh, oh, I know what the full name means. So, uh, the surname that I adopted Maku from is Makunochi. So Makunochi is a it's a type of bento box. It's a very、uh, specific type of Bento box. So in the bento, it has very specific things. I forgot what's in it. But、uh, Makunochi. This is the surname. It got shortened just for so that it becomes an alias. So I used it as an alias. But Makunochi is a type of bento box. I think it might have eggs in it. <laughs> It, it might be like a midday, midday type of bento. Oh, oh. Nah, Google's fine. Google Translate does work. I'm just having a little too much fun laughing at Google Translate. Oh, which by the way, is Korean SOV? Um, Blair. Neither、uh, at nor I、uh, prefer to look at it. We just wanted. Well, I, I took the initiative to just say we should ask you. You knew. As opposed to looking it up. You knew. Because, you know, Google. Just, just kidding. You knew. It is? Okay, cool. Oh, there you go. 
Confirmation. Now it's 100%, right? Unless, uh, unless, uh, Blair is going in for the long con. Yasai. <laughs> Yasai. Have you, have you ever, have you ever got long con before? Yasai. As a joke. Has anyone ever long con you as a joke? Like by a friend or something? Yasai. The long con. Yasai. That would be hilarious. I know, right? I I, I don't mind it, but I haven't. I think I. I I don't know. The longest con I've ever done was uh something dealing with my name, like how I re how my parents received uh, how my parents uh, gave me my name, my first name, and my given name. That's the only long con I've ever done, but it only lasted like less than a day. Why is there a spicy pepper in my chimichangas? Why not? Oh, not a spice person though. I see. What the heck? Now I want to eat. I already had a snack. We're, we're fine. No, no need. No need. No. But you see, cat, Blair is learning two languages that are SOV. So, does that mean you're going to pick up an SOV language? One of us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> You know? You know? Yes, I. Yes, I. Okay. I mean, oh yeah, true, true, true. Yes, I. Yeah, you're you're keeping. You're you're right. You're right. True. Yes, I. True. Yes, I. Yes, I. Fair enough. Yes, I. Although, yes, I, I can't relate, but uh, I'm a lava person. I like I like eating my lava, so um, yes, I. I I feel like if we had a yes, I. if we were next to each other, uh, Blair might just run away from the smell of spice yes, from I. my food, my lava food. <laughs> I I feel like my food would would scare Blair. Away. Yes, I. Ooh, you have gimbap. Mm. Um, you don't like spice either? Oh man, you guys really are twins. I would be giving you all the hot peppers. I'll try one bite and die. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, I like my. What about kimchi? Are you okay with kimchi? That's kind of spicy in a different way. Like, there's a lot of tang, the tang spice. In kimchi, I'm guessing it might be a little bit strong for you, Blair. Usually, when I think of gimbap, mm, right on top of a uh, right on top, you just place kimchi right on top. Go in, a anything goes with kimchi. Just stack a kimchi on there. I want to try kimchi so bad. Yeah, um, it has a tang to it. So tang is like, in my opinion, the other type of spice. So it's not like hot spice, or it's not like that traditional hot spice, but more like very tangy, stingy, like very, very stingy. Yeah, it's pickled. Yeah. 
it's that pickle tang and it's not for everyone people don't you know it's a hit or miss when it comes to either fermented or pickled things that that tang can be very, people can be very sensitive oh you like pickle stuff dude then kimchi although you might want to make sure the kimchi doesn't have like korean pepper flakes i i kind of like my uh kimchi to be also a hot type too i've got what it's called the korean pepper flakes but sometimes kimchi is prepared with that oh you're okay with korean pepper well yeah kimchi it, is it just because you can't find kimchi mm, kimchi i wouldn't survive in uh what's the first character oh 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 is that the wait what is oh uh, what does that stand for oh oh that's how Chengdu look like interesting yeah I haven't used the character those yeah for spicy food yeah, yeah. Well, anything Szechuan would blow your ears out, would it not? Yeah, Szechuan. Yeah, anything in Szechuan. Szechuan province. Yeah, I think I'm going to go to Asian Mart this Friday. Yeah, kimchi. How do I best describe kimchi? Um, Kimchi is like perella leaves. Really. O only like... It, it just goes with things. I think kimchi is like a more uh, fancier, fancier bread in this case. It just goes with everything. You see Szechuan, you run? Oh, Totally should go to a Szechuan house. <laughs> Fire. You know? The joke is, uh, do you want lava? Lava with your fire, you know? And maybe a side of uh, magma. Burns so good. Also fiery bum at the Yasai. end. You know? Yasai. They're also known for pandas. Yeah, yeah. I'm entertaining the idea of doing animations. Yes, oh, okay, okay. Yes, I. Have you done animations before, Blair? Yes, I. <clears throat> I haven't done any animations yes, myself. Yes, I. Yes, I. Yes, I. Yes, I. Every time I hear Yasai, I think of Yasai. Like, yeah, psych. You. Uh, okay. Chengdu is a very beautiful city, also very progressive. That, uh, the Sichuan province isn't the place with the cyberpunk city, right? What was the name of the cyberpunk city? And where is that located? If you know, if you know what I mean, Cyberpunk City. Yeah, yeah. Dong, uh, yeah. Dongxing. Dongqing. Oh, it's in its own province? Okay, okay, okay. Gyunyu. Now Gyunyu. that place. That is something else. I would love Gyunyu. to uh, see that place live. Gyunyu. Gyunyu. It has such an interesting topography with its uh, natural landscape too. Due to political stuff or something. Oh, okay. Gyunyu. Like, it, it's one of those things like uh, the, the technology and the architecture is sculpted around the natural landscape. 
So it makes it look so incredible. It's not like they like terraformed the entire, you know, how a lot of times uh, they would flatten places would flatten the entire uh, terrain just to accommodate architecture. But in they went above and beyond and design architecture around the terrain. I'm doing Chung are on your oh are on your itinerary. Very nice, very nice. Wait, uh did you tell me when uh when did you plan on going or was it just like eventually at some point? <clears throat> Introducing the yeah, it's it's incredible to look at. <laughs> that city is really incredible to look at. It's a technical marvel, really. And then you have like uh, the you know like the Mediterranean, right? And then you have things like the Mediterranean, the, like Venice, for example. And then you have like the coastal regions, you know, like in Spain, like around here, around the peninsula area, like there, there's so many interesting worlds. And then you have like the incredibly outlandish stuff in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and when I mean the middle of nowhere, I mean like uh, the Middle East and stuff where just have in in uh, what was this? What was the country that is basically only uh, its own country in that it, everything in the country was white and it's like incredibly exclusive? I don't, I don't remember what it. I, I want to say it's a minute. It's a stand. It's a stand. Maybe like it's not Kazakhstan. Turkmenistan, not one of them. The 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 way the city it's it's pretty wild. So different. It's one of the stands. I I don't know which one. You don't have a set date, but within the next couple of years. Constantinople playing in your head. Maybe two or three years is going to save a lot of money because my itinerary is huge. I'm planning to go over six cities. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, hold, hold up. I, I think I can find it just based on like context clues I can provide. Um, maybe I'll enter. No. Uh, dang, that Google search did not work. Um, it is. Oh, yeah, Turkmenistan. It's the capital capital of Turkmenistan. So it was Turkmenistan. Oh, uh, actually you can, apparently, Blair. I actually literally said only white city in country. <laughs> actually, I wrote white city buildings in <laughs> country. It is Turkmenistan. It's the capital of Tur Turkmenistan. Uh, Ashkabat. Ashkabat. I know, I know, white city. I know, I know, but we have AI now. All right, all right, all right. Calm down, calm down. It's uh, it's Ashgabat, uh, or however you pronounce it. Uh, this, it's the capital city of uh, Turkmenistan. Check out some. You should check out some uh, pictures of that city. It has some interesting backstory some very interesting backstory ego uh yon uh 
Uh, Yon Yonfun. Wait, is that right? It's Yonfun. That's not right. Pretty sure it's Yonfun. Okay, so that's a typo. Yonfun. That's a typo. Ego. 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 Yonfun. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like a lot of, uh, the metropolis of Singapore. Yeah. Singapore. Proper. Very, um, elegant. Also known as the Sea of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's because, uh, I don't know if you know, but um, the city itself is not populated. Um, you had like, it, it's a really deep, it's a really deep cut. Yeah, Singapore is incredibly beautiful. Indeed. Um, it, there's like, um, it's a city not to be populated, Blair. So that's why it's referred to as has like a nickname of City of the Dead. Like there, there are actually very, very few people in this. It's like a. Some might even say it's like a modeled city by someone who has a lot of money. So it it's a ghost city. Like when you go there to like visit or tourists or try, it's not a, like a tourist spot. It, it ha it's like very exclusive. So when you walk in there, there won't be anyone around. It's there for you to look at the city as a form of art. That's that's kind of the I, you know. You know you know what else is really beautiful that I do want to see because it's an architectural marvel, the Taj Mahal in person. Let's not forget about the Taj, the Taj Mahal. Yeah, it's a rich person moment. That's interesting. I mean, marble buildings probably, yeah, they're not purposely made to live in. Yeah, so marble buildings, everything has to be white. And when you enter there, <laughs> I think you have to dress in white too. Like everything in the city has to be white. I, I don't think you have to dress white. I think just everything in the city is white. That's how I came across it. I'm like, what? It, it was a clickbait title. So I was like, what does that mean? It's the same thing about what you just said. Like, you, you can't just type White City into Google and get it. I'm like, yeah, me too. I would think that as well. <laughs> Until I encountered that. It, it was a YouTube short. So not, not. Not, not that I found it on Google or something. Like a Google search. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's not correct. Ego. 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 <clears throat> like on my ego. Jupun. Jupun. That's correct. Sensei. Yonpun。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英語。英
messed that up completely anyways. Yeah, they have it entered incorrectly. Regardless. Okay. Alright. Oh, and this is not... This is suspicious too. Why are there two of them? Katari, Hanashi. Katari, Hanashi. Are you serious? Okay. Katari. So Katari is not necessarily correct either. So Katari is a little bit of a miss here too. I, I tried looking it up on Katari. It, it's like, hmm. And then, Hanashi. Yeah, Hanashi is the other one. Katari. But. I can see why they have both of them, but they they both yeah. I just picked the one. Ego. Ego. We're not gonna talk about that. Yoru. 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 Ego. Eki. Katari. Katari. Okay. You'll probably encounter these. In my duo has given me go to sub in for oh wow well, now that doesn't use it in the lesson oh you mean ga raccoon moment ga why didn't they use it right away that's interesting hey go hey go okay Katari. Oh my gosh. Stuck on this. Katari. Ego. Ego. E. Katari. Ego. Sengetsu. Ham. Nihongo. Oh no. We're almost there. Nihongo. 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 Kinyobi. Ego. Nanyobi. Kunatsu. Nihongo. Go. Hey. Nihongo. Don't swear, coming backwards. Ni, ni hon, hon go ego go e. ego kunatsu nan yobi sui yobi ni hon go yonpun yonpun it is yonpun so the audio is correct. The writing is not. Hanbun. Hanbun. Yeah, that's a good one. Hanbun. Yon. Yonbun. Gohun. Yonbun. Hapun. Hanbun. Hanbun. Bun. B. Bun. Jupun Han Bun Han Bun Han Bun Yon Bun Yon Bun Han Bun Han Ipun Han Bun Oh, Hanbun. Oh. All right. I had a thought and then I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. San. Mou onaji hotel ni tomaritaku nai desu. Ugh. Tomaritaku nai desu. And all the way at the end. Yeah, yeah, I thought of something immediately and I was pausing for a moment. I was thinking of something else. Uh All 
All right then. I don't want to stay at the same. Uh, onaji, onaji hotel ni, uh, hotel ni to, tomari takunai desu. Okay. Pretty aggravating right now. <laughs> Chairo. Chairo. Uh, today I encountered two things with Duolingo that I'm like, eh, whatever. It's it's uh, uh pretty meh because it's about English translations and where adverbs go. Ane ane wa nihongo no sen sensei des. Uh okay. Uh, chairo, chairo no uh, something. Neko, neko works. Mo hotel ni tomari takunai desu. Kawaii, neko, neko ga yon hiki. Okay, four. O sara wa beta beta deshita. Okay. Osara. Deshita. Uh. Oh, dining. Dining no. Osara. Oishi sandwich deska? Oishi sandwich deska? Oishi sandwich deska? Eh? Shinsetsu uh Tenny Tenny no Yasashi Yasashi Tenny Sam Kujihan ni Ochao no Mimas Kuji Kujihan Kujihan ni Ochao no Mimas Ni Ochao no Mimas Uh let's see Okay. Ah, so no hea, so no hea, so no hea, ni, neko ka, neko ka, ah, yon hiki, ah, yon hiki, yon hiki imas. Yon hiki imas. Oh, big cats. Oki. Hi, Ototo wa Saka no coachi des. Hi. Ototo Ototo wa wa saka kochi saka no where the heck saka no kochi des okay okay ja uh ja ten ten san o yo yobi yobi masho yobi masho ka Hana san mo, Hana san mo, anime, oh no. Hana san mo, Fuji, Fuji ni, Fuji ni, anime o mimas. Hana san mo, Fuji ni, anime o mimas. I don't like you either. <laughs> hey. Alright. We need to get at least two hearts because the whole idea of having to start over because of a heart deficiency, not cool. Not cool. Gift shop. Gift shop. Osaka wa shizuka na toshi desu ka? Osaka wa shizuka na a toshi. Toshi desu ka? Not particularly. Kaban. Handa no akachan mo imasu. Handa. 
ぱりパンダ、パンダの赤ちゃんも、赤ちゃんもいますよ。There are panda babies too. Okay. 赤ちゃん。赤ちゃん。Okay. 毎日はなさんと遊びますか毎日は,はなさんと遊びますか毎日。ラーメンや。毎朝午前4時に起きます。毎朝午前、午前4時にあります。開きます、起きます、起きます。Sorry. <笑>起きます。ます<笑> I basically just went through all, all the combinations in my head. 毎朝、毎朝午前4時に起きます。Uh, 4時4時午前午前4時4時に毎朝午前3時に起きますナオミさんと遊びますかナオミさんと遊びますかギフトショップギフトショップにで,でかわいいかわいいイップルあのあキーホールダーあキーホールダー買いましたキーホールダーを買いましたキーチェーン週末は本を読みます週末しますします週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週末週週末は、週末。週末。週末は、週末は、週末は野球を見ます。野球。野球を見ます。<笑>野球を見ます。田中さん、田中さんのカバンですか田中のカバンですか Is it? Hold up. Tanaka. Tanaka san no kaban deska. Okay, that's fine. Shibuya, a、uh, Shibuya wa Shizuka, Shizuka Tokoro Janai des. Or Shibuya wa Shibuya, Shibuya wa Shibuya wa. しずかしずかなしずかなしずかなところところじゃないじゃないです。OK。All right, let's go back and do the one exercise l e f t y o n p u n y o n p u n h a n d u n y o n p u n h a n d u n y o n p u n 10分8分5分分,分半半分半分4分4分半分,分半分4分4分
4回。Alright, alright. That's a wrap for Japanese. We have 10 minutes left over. Uh, so, pretty good, pretty good. My eyes are. Hmm. Adjusting. We're adjusting. Try to get one more hour earlier tomorrow and then the day after. Got two more days to move my、uh, sleep schedule up a little. So then I can like head out at eight or nine to get down to get down to the city. A different city, in a different state. <laughs> All right. So, what is the take home message today? Take home message today architecture is amazing. I I'm just kidding.、Um, take home message. Sometimes, sometimes you have SOV, sometimes you have SVO, sometimes you have also floating everywhere, everywhere, you know. Also, I, I'm, just, I'm just rattling off. You know, it's all part of the experience, right? When you go back and forth, I think、uh, going back and forth constantly. Is different from always thinking in one thing. My natural melatonin cycle. Uh, indeed. Um, what you call it? Yeah, the take home message is I don't think messing up or wiggling around when it comes to going back and forth between language is a bad thing, actually, in my opinion. Or it doesn't have to be a negative thing. Although, Duolingo certainly makes, <laughs> makes you feel like it's a bad thing. But that's besides the point. All right. In the long run, it just reminds you that you're, you think、uh, rapidly, very rapidly in multiple languages. Although, there is something to, to be said about the elegance in which people、uh, stay in one context and not the other and whatnot. I personally don't do that. Like, I'm not one to naturally rest on one's one perspective. It is something else when you see someone who, like, here's the cut, right? Here's one of the cuts. It was a time when I said that if you learn it, I, I always imagined, I had imagined in my experience self that when I learned、uh, Japanese, that I may go through like a, like kind of like a personality, like renaissance or something. I don't know what to call it. But I think the more I'm doing this, the more that I, I think it was naive to think that for myself. Now, for many people, in my opinion, For many people, it was going off my impressions, right? My impressions. So when people talk about how, oh, yeah, when they learned a new language and they lived in it and they immersed in it and whatnot, their personality changes, right? Like, or like, it, it, it's like a code swapping where when someone talks, suddenly their motions and their hands and their gestures and stuff become swapped. Like, you kind of hear, you kind of see it in interviews a lot of times, right? And you can kind of see that in a subtle way for individuals who are already multicultural. I want to say you can kind of see it in a subtler way, but it is very noticeable when it's there, like. Second, second culture, so to speak. So they like transplanted and immersed. Like it's super extreme to notice when you see those interviews where someone moved to a different country for a very long time and then acquired its language and all that stuff. It's very noticeable, right? And then they still retain the, I guess, the cultural identity and 
the stuff in between uh, i mean from their previous place so a lot of times in his interviews you see someone who clearly speaks american english then they moved to japan for like 10 years and then uh, whenever they swap to speaking japanese you can see like their mannerisms tones and stuff may have also swapped too but it might be a lot attributed to the language i think for myself it hasn't it hasn't been oh well i spelled naive incorrectly but uh all right it's fine naive i think i'm gonna go on a limb right now tentatively much like most things i think i tend to not do this I tend to create a, a hybrid. So lots of times in the long run, like for example, it doesn't even have to be culture. It could be something like, oh, what if I played a, a certain video game for a really long time? Like, oh, right. Did I, did I become entirely, entirely embedded in like the os community the answer is no and i think there was a romantic feeling that like oh yeah maybe my japanese voice will be different or something like that and people always talk about uh i i still remember saying this in like two or three months where someone else a very popular content creator suggested like hey you know your Japanese voice is going to sound different from your English voice or like etc and so and now I'm starting to take a double back I'm doubling back yes and no your Japanese voice is gonna sound like at least in my opinion if you're someone like me who likes to keep all the perspectives running at the same time which slows you down possibly like uh, the whole adverb thing and the English translating back and forth. If you're someone like me, I suppose, I don't know how many people resonate with that. Oftentimes when people really like a culture, they want to become that culture. I don't know if you feel the same way, Kat, about Chinese culture. But generally speaking, those are people they're speaking to who want to be Japanese. And now I'm starting to realize that much like uh, the grammar thing, how is this related to the whole grammar thing and stuff? I I think of the, all the discussions we talk about and stuff. Is I think about them all the time. Like I don't I don't want to be one or the other. I want to be all of the above. So a lot of times, yeah, it makes language learning a bit complicated, for sure. I totally get it where people say like stop translating in your head and stop worrying about your own cultural norms only think like as the Japanese do to truly understand the language it's like all right well I'm starting to settle on the idea that I won't actually truly understand what the Japanese culture and their language are I make an honest attempt but I will constantly frame it within all of the cultures I'm familiar with I don't want to exclude them from each other and that to me is what provides me my perspective not the perspective of someone who wants to assimilate into a different culture i want to be synthesizing the culture because uh in my life i honestly think you can still take a subtlety but instead of instead of creating or compartmentalizing two separate cultures two separate culture i think of creating a mary mary of those two cultures so that might be blasphemous and all that stuff and it's also kind of one of the reasons why someone said like oh are, do you plan on moving to japan or i mean no the answer is no it, it's actually going to stay no because in my opinion i grow up in a country where uh this happens more often than than uh one in which they are constantly struggling to 
uh, or not struggling, maybe successfully retaining their identity, I suppose. It's not to say I don't appreciate it. I love seeing and participating and observing other people's monocultural states. I'm just not a person who's very gravitated towards that. That's kind of also the way language learning is kind of perceived too. Oftentimes, uh, language learning takes that approach as well. And I don't really resonate too much with that. Even, from, uh, even if it's a sacrifice of being pragmatic or mechanical, I think earnestly, if you contextualize everything with all the other stuff, it brings, it breathes so much perspective and interesting. Yeah, because people who want to kind of be Japanese or their target culture. Yeah. I feel like I'm happy with growing up as an American Latina and growing a hybrid of embracing Chinese culture alongside my Americanisms. Yeah. I also wouldn't want to be completely become Chinese. I love my culture. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. So 100%. Okay. I think that when you are passionate about something, you might consciously adopt a persona based on your fascination. It could be reduced by practice. It could be reduced by practicing self-awareness. True. Um, you can also become too self-aware. There, there's also uh, too self-awareness. So I'm one that is incredibly self-aware. So naturally, it would reduce the uh, unconscious decision making. I, with that said, not only you can let it happen though, as a as a person that practices, in my opinion, I think I have a relatively high decision making when it comes to my self awareness. You can choose then to do it as opposed to unconsciously. You can consciously choose to adopt a persona based on one's fascination. So I consciously have chosen to model my English speaking patterns after my mentor. So like consciously adopting and actively adopting their mannerism. I've ad consciously adopted many mannerisms voluntarily. Um, there are obviously unconscious adoptions, but largely um, it, it deals with making a decision that presents itself that way. So like, for example, moving to a different country will greatly increase the odds of unconsciously adopting a persona, uh, like a effective persona because of the sake of immersion. And in that sense, that's why I have no aspirations of leaving the United States. I have, I do want to visit other countries. However, um, the persona that I grew up in, the unconscious adoption, when I was not aware yet, self-aware yet, is one of being a multicultural person and not one uh, focused on passionately adopting and assimilating into a different culture. And oftentimes, the reason why I want to emphasize that is many individuals who want to assimilate into a different culture is because actually they dislike their own culture, their original, their transplant, like their culture of origin. Like they have a lot of uh, dislikes and like long term grievances. Because if you, those conversations I have with people, they always tell me why they move to another country, adopt a different culture, assimilate a different culture, because all the things that come out of them, that's not to say that they represent the vast majority of people who move, just my interactions with the vocal minority. I'm, I'm hoping it's a vocal minority. When they want to assimilate into another culture, it's largely due to grievances with the original culture that they are, they were in. Like, oh yeah, and it can be ranged from anything pragmatic to anything sentimental. Like, oh yeah, people are idiots where I came from. So I decide to go to a country that aren't full of idiots. Or, um, I know this sounds um, a little bit 
harsh, but those th those aren't the words that I'm thinking of. I I'm being I'm actually using euphemism. So like, oh yeah, everyone is dumb where I came from, so I wanted to fit in somewhere else, somewhere that's like me. So they're often a, from a situation where they feel that they belong in a different culture, a culture that they resonate with, however superficially or un inexperienced. So they went to that country and that makes sense if it makes them happy. I don't usually find it like that. I feel like there's room enough for a person to be synthesizing the culture. But there is a lot of self-loathing involved, in my opinion. Or entitlement. Maybe self-loathing is too strong of a word. Uh, entitlement. I agree. I dislike some aspects of my country, and I noticed that I was neglecting my native language a few years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. And, and I don't like that. Uh, or what I mean is, I don't like that there are people who are upset about their own country and then motivated to assimilate another country because they don't feel like they belong in the country they grew up in that that screams to me that's a not not like i i'm not trying to be righteous or moral grandstanding here that just sounds like an awful place right um i'm expressing that i don't have those feelings uh, for better or for worse, for all of its intensive purposes, because of the way my perspective is regarding my own country of origin, I see other countries in a similar perspective, right? I don't see, like, a foreign country that I'm not experienced with assuming that it's like some utopia. It's obviously going to have pros and cons. And I think those passionate people who, like, focuses all their lifestyle around even the language itself that this is it they kind of get hit hard in the face when they realize like oh yeah i can never like you get comments like oh i can never sound like a native japanese person i'm like well you don't have to to be happy at least i hope you don't right because you weren't born japanese or like i wasn't born chinese per se like, I was born to Chinese parents. And some may argue that if I wanted to be Chinese, I may never be. So that perspective helps one be really healthy. And healthy with their relationships and with themselves and their circumstances. I think this whole like language learning thing really took me down that trip for quite some time. When someone comes up to me and say, well, you're never going to be fluent in Japanese. It's like, well, that's okay. I, I will at least try to use Japanese. I say, well, you're never going to use Japanese if you don't forget what English is like. like uh, that's okay. I will try to hold on to my English and still continue to use Japanese, right? Or try to use. Kind of like that. I feel like it's all connected to, to some extent. All connecting. I wouldn't mind that if in five years I envelop myself in more and more Chinese culture and my persona changes, but I would never want to adopt to only Chinese culture. I love many cultures and how bad American culture kind of is to a lot of people, and I can agree in my own opinion, but it's still a part of me. That's fair enough. That being said, there's a still a chance if I were to move to mainland for a while, it's it could still unconsciously happen to me. Um, yeah, yeah. Given my obsession, appreciation for Chinese culture and kind of an, unlike, an unliking for American culture, fair enough. Yeah, and it matters of perspective, yeah. So, uh, with all that said, obviously, conscious or unconscious, these are uh, super interesting conversations to be having, especially if you're into language learning and cultural like synthesis or... Uh, assimilation or adoption you'll never be fluent okay so what it's my hobby and i keep learning exactly because i like the feeling of understanding interacting in that culture without being restricted to my environment exactly yep yep 
I have literally, just as a really, really side note, I have literally been told I cannot be Chinese anymore. I'm like, okay, that's, that's, that's okay. I mean, I, am I going to stop trying? No. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to be worried. You, you know, like I, I, I will continue to try to do stuff and understand things. It's, it's weird about the whole purity argument. That's my two cents. And that kind of reminds me of this stuff. Where like, how, how did I acquire some of the stuff that I've acquired? Well, it wasn't necessarily because I was living and breathing a certain thing. It, it definitely works for other people. I think uh, this is fantastic. Sometimes people's ideals of how much someone can be of something is insane. Yeah, like uh, being unborn and being born into another environment. And I'm not saying this uh, like a joke. I seriously think people are very unhappy with themselves. Even though they're incredibly talented and they uh, can learn language really well, they can do things really well, and yet the moment they think about what they're doing, sometimes it upsets them that they weren't born differently or born somewhere else or born with circumstances that they have now. Like, uh, you know, some of the interviews with some really happy transplants, like people who move from a different country, like in Japan, you hear this woman talk really well about, it's like, you know, I have a lot of some they asked her a question they asked like what do you think about all the foreigners who like live for five years in japan and then decide to move back to their own their original country um and the person said something really wonderful and it was like well you know i didn't move that person said they didn't move to japan expecting that they become magically become japanese as in like just so you know, this person comes from, uh, this person appears very, very different. She, you know, a person, I don't know where they're from, but they're, they have very dark skin, right? And she said that she has a very realistic with perspective and a harmonious like relationship with, like her Japanese is really good, like, like really, really excellent. The idea is they were alluding to the idea where some people wish for things to happen that they don't, that that may never happen or just like just strictly speaking has already come to pass. And they accept it for what it was and continue to do what they want, like what they do best to understand the culture and whatnot. And for me, I think how does this relate back to the language learning thing? Like I'm learning the best. Uh, I'm learning a way that makes it really intriguing to me. Like I like translating. I like the idea that language tries to bridge gaps and whatnot. Um, in in a way, though, there is definitely this like unfeeling unfeeling commentary on how a language should not be mixed together right especially for learning i'm like okay i'm fully embracing the shenanigans that i'm gonna encounter just for the record so i i hope no one else feels like they need to go out of their way to tell me to tell me that i i shouldn't do that all this English I, is a part of the experience. And all the Fujinese. Okay, that's a fun little story, digression. I, I like ending, ending, you know, these sessions with a cultural discussion, if you will. And for me, this to give you a context this was inspired off of someone 
who made a who is starting to learn Japanese, which is awesome. I mean, not Japanese, Chinese. Someone who's learning Chinese, but they made a comment that they they found it weird that they saw an Asian person, me, learning Chinese, because an Asian person normally should have learned Chinese when they're born Chinese, right? Like, because they thought. I guess I look Chinese, which by the way, I can't tell the difference. So I'm, I'm likely to believe that most people who aren't Asian might not be able to tell either, which is if you look at someone's like, okay, well, they appear Asian and statistically they might know Chinese, right? Because there are a lot of Chinese people. Just that that's where the inspiration came from. Where like uh can other people even appear like if you even appear Asian, what what is to say that you do need to know a specific Asian language? That now that is a deep cut. And that inspired this. The whole idea that there is monocultural perceptions and it's not neither good or a bad thing it's just a really interesting thing it's a very revealing thing about the person like there there are perspectives out there anyways thanks for chatting thanks for contributing by the way uh yeah ladies and gentlemen and yeah that's the end of our Japanese session. Uh, if you're going to watch this later, arigato gozaimasu. And uh, until next time, for you Japanese peeps out there, mata ne. And I'm going to go get up, maybe get a snack because both of you were eating on my account. I'm going to go grab a snack and then I'll be right back for Chinese. All right. eating too much. <laughs>